Hello everybody and welcome back. It's a nice, warm, sunny, rainy ass day here in Tennessee. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about these Thermal King units. This here is the inverter. Uh, it's a, this in here is a 2500 watt. And if you look, it's a Xantrax Pro. And the reason why that's not a Thermal King brand uh, inverter is because the one in this truck after, oh my goodness, uh, five years burn up. And what happens is you get dust in these vents on, and there's a cooling fan behind this vent here. And then there's two cooling fans between this inverter and the mounting plate. And there's just a tiny gap there. And dust gets built up in those cooling fans and it'll overheat and burn up. Another reason why these inverters burn out quick is because people will run more than one invert one appliance at a time. Don't watch TV and run your microwave at the same time. It gets too much of a pull. It'll heat it up and it'll burn it out. If you're going to watch TV, watch TV. If you're going to cook something, cook something, but use one appliance at a time. Now, uh, if you go to use your inverter and you've got the yellow light on there saying it's in default, the first thing I always do is I try to reset it at the outlet and if that doesn't work. Then I'll check the voltage coming into this unit and make sure that it's got a minimum of 12 volts here with a multimeter. If you got 12 volts there, then it's most likely your inverter's bad. Don't go to Thermal King and buy these inverters. Get on Amazon and that Xantrax Pro 2500 watt is $300. If you go to Thermal King, you're going to get a Thermal King inverter that costs $600. And if you peel the label off, it's a Xantrax Pro. Same inverter, different sticker, and they're going to charge you double for that inverter. You don't want to pay that. Now, if you check these two terminals here and you don't have power at these terminals, it's probably going to be this 250 amp fuse. And I'm going to show you where this is. These are about 20 bucks at um, O'Reilly's. And, uh, you know, they have them on the shelf. You don't have to order them or anything like that. And you can see the fuse there. So I'll give you a moment if you want to screenshot that. Because you might be able to order those online cheaper. Anyway, you go to your battery box here. And there is your fuse that goes to your inverter. Now, your inverter is most likely going to be underneath one of these little rubber boots. If you don't have power at your inverter, take that fuse out, run a continuity test. If you don't have any power running through it, replace it. There's an identical fuse right here underneath this plastic case, and you just snap it open. You see it's got a zip tie on it holding it shut. You just clip the zip tie, pop it open. Same fuse again, and that goes to the jumper posts that are mounted on the back of your truck. You know, the, uh, the, the posts you use to jump start your truck. So if it's freaking cold outside, and you want to cook yourself dinner, and you don't have time to get somewhere to uh, get that fuse, you pull it out of here, put it in there, your inverter's working again, and you're back in business. That is, if the fuse is what the problem is because you've ran too many appliances at once and you burnt that fuse up. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is right here. This is the brain for your system. And if you keep blowing this 30 amp fuse right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a 30 amp fuse right there. And if you keep popping this 30 amp fuse and you can't figure it out, I'm going to show you what causes that. Now, you've also got a reset button right there, as you can see. And sometimes you have to pop that reset button because you've overloaded the APU because you've tried to start it too many times because you have it checked change your air filter or what have you <laughs> so let's come on around here to the APU itself okay now if you look I've got a zip tie holding these wires up right here 
and uh, the reason for that is it kept popping fuses because this wire loom right here was laying on top of the tank strap and it rubbed a bare spot in there and it kept shorting out and popping the fuse inside and after a while those little 30 amp fuses get expensive so if you keep popping that fuse check these wires make sure they're not rubbing and if they are look for bare spots and use a little bit of electrical tape to, or liquid electrical tape and seal it up and then you're good now uh, there's also been a lot of thefts on these covers and uh, this the, the cover off of this thing has actually been stolen three times <laughs> and these covers are getting a lot harder to find well this lower cover is homemade I made this uh, a couple months ago and uh, what I did was just I had a couple of old signs laying around that I picked up at work and they were like no parking signs or whatever and I'm not telling you to go steal street signs so you can make you a cover for your APU I'm just telling you where I got this material and uh, anyway I put a hinge in here I actually improved their design a little bit so if I've got to get in here and you know mess with the air conditioner or whatever I don't have to fool with dropping this entire panel I could just take these two bolts out and drop it down and uh, mess with anything down here I want or change the oil filter or change the oil without taking the entire cover off now these bolts after I lined them up and drilled them through I spot welded them on the inside of the casing so the bolts don't fall out and I've got four bolts underneath and then two out here with anti-vibration nuts on them and, uh, and the way I made this cover is um, I have a workbench in the shop and I just put a one by four on the edge of the workbench and uh, measured out how much of a lip I wanted. I hung that over top of that, the edge of the workbench on top of that one by four, clamped it down and I just tapped it with a hammer until I bent that edge over and this edge over. And the reason why I put a one by four on is so after I tapped one edge and bent it, I could do the other edge without straightening out one side. So anyway, now we're into inside. Okay, I forgot to mention this in another video. This is not a fuel filter. This is a fuel and water separator. And I should have told you guys about that. Uh, you don't need to replace this very often at all But when you do replace it you can go to an auto parts store and they're about 35 bucks for one of those Your fuel filter is on the back side of the motor by your fuel pump. It's down at the bottom really hard to get to Now uh, another problem people have is your fuel lines gelling up on these things for your Wobasto and if you look here, this is a little fuel pump and fuel lines for your Wabasto. And they just run right across and up through the frame, or up through the floorboard, and into the uh, Wabasto heater. And what I'm going to do to solve that is I'm going to get me some pipe insulator. And I'm going to run me some pipe insulator over top of these fuel lines. And it'll help keep the air off that fuel line because even if there's anti-gel in there, there's still a small amount of fuel in there and uh, that small fuel volume makes them tend to gel up and freeze. So run you some pipe insulator on that and it's going to solve a lot of your issues with your Robosto not working in the winter time. Now over to the Robosto. <clears throat> okay, on the other side of all that stuff over there is the Wabasto heater. It's a black box, got a little blower on it. You could find it by following that fuel line up underneath the bunk where I can see where it goes through. And uh, if you go to light your Wabasto and it doesn't light, you know, you just can't get that Wabasto to light up, get you an air gun and blow through all the opening holes on that thing and blow the dust out of there because, like any heater, uh, any propane or gas heater what happens is they'll get dust down there in the igniter hole and then your fuel air mixture is not going to be right so it won't ignite so 
before you take it to a shop because your Wabasta is not lighting, blow some air through that thing. Blow out all the holes you could find on that thing, blow a bunch of air in there, and 90% of the time that fixes the issue. All right, guys, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.